What is up guys, Forest Knight here, and today I got a comment on my most recent video from a fella named Herman. And I'm not calling him out in a negative way. I, I guess I'll say I'm calling him out in a positive way because his comment really resonated with me and I think it can resonate with all of you guys because I'm sure so many of you have gone through the same thing. Maybe you're over that hump, I'm not sure, but this will remind you to avoid Sir, let, let me let me read the comment and then it, it, it'll apply context to what I'm trying to say. So Herbert says, I think you are trying to learn too many things at once. I agree. You need to know more than just one language, but I think you should stick to one. And once you become good with it, learning another is easy. Herman, thank you for the comment. And Herman, you're 100 percent correct. So before I like talk about how it applies to you all, I'm just going to address it for myself. So for me, it does apply to me because this is really an iOS development channel, but you know, I haven't really been doing many project based iOS development videos lately. I've been doing a little bit of web development. I've mentioned how I've been doing a little bit of Java development and that for those who don't know is because university, I have a web development course and I have Java programming course has taken over, you know, my programming time. So every time I sit down to, to program, it makes sense for me to do my coursework because I don't want to fail that wastes time and money. And those have hard deadlines set. For iOS development, they have no hard deadlines set. And in all honesty, a lot of you don't know that coming into iOS development, I was already good with Java and C++. Java, I like a little bit more than C++, but still, those were my main languages, and those still are what I'm best at, is Java and C++, because that's what I learned in school. And that is what it will get me a job for where I live, which is on the eastern side of the United States, where big military town and things of that nature. So the government, as well as the government contracting, Java and C++ is what you're gonna find. Those are the type of jobs, if I want to stay where I am, which I love where I live, that, that's those are the type of jobs I'm gonna find, unless I'm working for myself. That's where iOS development comes into play. So I want to be able to you know, take on clients. And for me, at the time, it made more sense to go with iOS development. Another reason I went with iOS development for my side projects is because there are so many different options that I wanted to have. So I didn't want to have any more of what I was learning in school. I wanted to have something that I could have in my hand. The Java programs I was writing was just like, you know, these little applications or big applications with, you know, not really much user interfaces. It was a different thing than what I wanted to create for myself. So it was two choices, mobile development or web development. Web development, you have HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, or you know what stack are you going to use? You're going to use the mean stack, or are you going to you know go with Node.js, or are you going to go with Meteor.js, or you know are you going to de develop for React, or are you going to make it compatible with Electron? I can go on and on about everything that has to do with web development, including IDEs. Am I going to use Sublime Text 2 or 3 or whatever version they're on nowadays? Or am I going to use Atom? That's not that as big of a deal, but it's still something to decide. So what I did is I'm like, I could develop for mobile applications, iOS, well, you know, what do I need to do with iOS? Oh, Swift, I'm gonna use Swift, because you know, that's a future and current of iOS as, as opposed to Objective-C. And then my IDE is gonna be Xcode, that's, that's it. I don't have any of those choices to make within iOS. So with, when it comes to iOS, it's very simple. And I chose iOS over Android, although I already knew Java, is because from what I saw, iOS developers, when it comes to freelance, when it comes to the app store, they'll get paid more than Java developers. That's a whole nother video that I can make about that. I actually may have already made a similar video about that. But besides the point, iOS is what I went with. So that's really how this comment applies to myself is that, you know, as you can see on my Instagram, I say I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. So I already kind of know this. It's because I do Java development, I do iOS development, I do web development. But how it applies to you guys is that you may, you know, if you're in your beginning stages, you may like do iOS development and then once you get to a certain point, it gets a little bit too hard. Like that certain point, point may be when you're trying to take all of this knowledge you learn and build your app, you know, your, your awesome social media application or whatever it may be, and you're just overwhelmed. So you, you go over to Java programming and then you realize that Java programming is even harder or it's maybe, just as hard and then you, you realize ah, let me just go over to web development because you, know, you don't want to worry about Java and then you're, you're good at the basics of web development and then you realize oh, this is too much for me you don't want to just have the basic knowledge of everything 
you want to figure out what you want to build. For me, mobile applications. And especially if you're self-taught, you know, if you don't have the distractions that I have, you know, when it comes to programming time, I have to work on university. Once I'm out of university, I'll have programming time for whatever the heck I want to make. For you guys, if you're self-taught, you're working at home, choose one thing. Choose iOS development, for example. You want to focus on iOS development first. And you want to get up, you want to build all these little apps, and then you want to build your big app and try to build a business around that. Or you just want that for your portfolio, and then you build another app and another app. It depends on your goal with where you want to go. If you want to build an app business, like a business around an app, that's one thing. You build that app, and you roll with it. And then you can do some programming on the side. Or if you want to build a portfolio for a clientele, you do that. But that's what you, you want to become an expert in said programming language and, and software development. You don't want to just learn the basics. And to be completely honest with you guys, you, you know I'm an honest guy, I'm honest with you, I'm honest with myself, is that I was going to make this video anyway when it came to this comment. And then I remembered I got an email, um, I think it was yesterday. So I got this comment today at the time of recording and I got an email yesterday from DevSlopes who is the company where I learned iOS development from and they reached out to me in order to, to tell you guys about something that they have going on. For, the, for a 30 day span, it's already been about a week, so about for the next 23 days of recording this video, they are offering a one payment lifetime access to their site. So basically their site is, you know, you can learn iOS development, Android development, uh, web development, or anything else that you can see on the screen, and you're able to just spend $600 for some that may be way out of their league so for those that this isn't for you but for those who want to learn forever because you get all of their courses currently now I must mention this you you get all of their courses that they've ever made and you get all of their courses that they're ever going to make so everything under dev slopes you have access to which is which is amazing I haven't really seen any other company do something similar to this other than you know like a subscription plan or things of that nature which they also have but for the one-time access fee, you get everything forever from them, which I think is really cool. And I'm gonna leave an affiliate link or we're gonna do a promo code. We haven't figured out which one we're gonna do. And But regardless, it'll be down in the description box below. What the affiliate link will do, it will allow me to get a commission off of what you spend for their courses, which will help me you know, get better gear for this channel. I'll put all that money back into the channel because that's where it came from. And you know it'll help me get a, a better mic, or I'll get better editing software, or I'll get a better camera, a better lens. So all this money will be put back into the uh, the channel to make better content for you guys. So it just will come full circle. I give away free content, and I want to make sure any money that comes my way can make better free content. That's just what I'm about. I like it. That's what I really want to leave you guys with. Remember, link is down in the description below. If you like the video, be sure to like it because it makes sense to like the video if you like it and subscribe if you aren't already. And until next time, have a good one.